Hi, Warren Whitlock here with Ivan Lika uh, of uh, Phonium. Phonium, this is a cool company. They are mining on phones. And if, you, if that doesn't get your curiosity, I don't know, maybe, maybe when you find out for a minute, you will because this is like super cool technology and super hot right now. So uh, welcome. Hi, Ivan. Good, good to be on, the, Warren. Thank you for having me. Good, good. Let's talk about uh, uh, why you are mining on phones. Absolutely. Well, Phonium is a unique and cool project, as you have mentioned yourself. The reason being for this is because uh, Phonium was built from the ground up to suit mobile devices. As we know, mining is a complex mechanism that is used to be done on big computers with uh, so much uh, computing allocation being done towards that in order for it to happen. Well, that leaves the phones out of the equation. Therefore, we need to make sure that uh, mobile devices can still somehow participate in a blockchain structure. And this is where Phonium comes in with its unique structure and the way that it allows users to mine on mobile devices First of all, uh, allowing every, everyone to participate that has a mobile smart device, as well as there's no need for technical knowledge to come in place to start the mining process and to get going on Phonium. So it, it almost sounds like a game, and I've heard a lot of things about games and schemes and scams of, about uh, getting into crypto with a, with a phone. Uh, what's different about Phonium? What's different about Phonium is that its unique uh, proposition here is that anyone that has a mobile device can participate in the network. We actually have a working product already that allows you to just take a, a peek of what the, the app would look like starting to mine with just a couple clicks of the button and uh, just like so we are now mining phonium tokens on the device and we could experience ourselves that these devices will not overheat and will not make the phone unusable therefore using it and opening other applications such as maps and navigation and phone calls are still uh, doable on the phone regardless of the mining presenting on the device okay so um you 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 addressed the the not heating up does that mean you've you've conquered the problem of this draining a battery that is correct the reason for um most uh mobile devices to be to not be able to mine on uh, those devices is because they do not have such a computing power that a huge computer can allocate therefore if they do the exact same uh, mechanism that this big computer does that leaves the smart device with so little computing power with a, such a complex mathematical equation that needs to be solved therefore it will start to overheat as it will perform as much as possible with its processor but we have overcome the issue in a way that this challenge at the beginning turned in our favor because of the uh, sensors that the mobile devices have. We have a heat sensor for the battery and for the CPU, so we can monitor it. And if for any reason the device starts to get in a mid-range, not even the danger zone when it's too hot, this app, Phonium, will automatically exclude it from mining so it doesn't damage the device. But better uh, than that, you would still be rewarded with Phonium tokens for the amount of time that you spent within the app or with the app running in the background. But you would still be able to mine tokens. Therefore, you, your device would, would equalize with the rest of the miners on the network. All right, so it sounds like you've designed this so that uh, I can't get a rack of computers in a data center and, and take over and, and beat the system. It's, for, it's meant for phones, so mining-wise, uh, I guess it would be minor compared to all the power used to do a Bitcoin, is that correct? That is correct, absolutely. I have worked on a unique algorithm to differentiate computers and ASIC miners 
from mobile devices, allowing to build a mobile only structure. So therefore computers will not be able to tack into the network and uh, steal all the tokens. I say steal because they would use so much power to overcome those processor processes, it would not be suitable. But better than that, they would be um, locked down to Android and iOS only. So even if someone with a uh, uh, smart TV or a uh, smart fridge wants to mine phonium, that would probably be something in the future that we'll look at. But for now, we're left with the 2.5 billion smart devices out there that are ready to mine. Okay, so uh, one way to, to put that then would be that instead of tapping into the processing power of the device, it's really designing a program that works for the device and is unique and outside of the, the normal system. Uh, how is this gonna be used uh, by, the, by the people? I know that uh, playing it like a game, um, when, I, when I downloaded it and put it on my phone, I immediately wanted to, you know, go get more devices or figure out how to game the system or get involved or check on it every 15 minutes. Uh, there is that appeal uh, of uh, the, the gamification part of it. Is that going to help in other things? Is this going to be something more than just somebody playing with their phone to mine? That is a great way to put it, uh, Warren. It definitely does feel like a game when you start the process. Not only that it allows you to monitor how much you're um, making in tokens from an Android device in terms of daily, weekly, and monthly income, but also would allow you to, to check on it anytime you want to see how, how great it is doing. Now, this gamification is not just put out there because of um, that's how we want to do it. It's because this is a deeper thought that we have um, um, included in our roadmap. Uh, we have actually worked on building a platform that allows um, developers to create apps and games on the Phonium network. So you could actually have games that allow you cross um, digital asset cross uh, promotion. So you could um, have assets in one game and then when you want to use them in a different game, you could transfer them to a different game, whether that's Phonium tokens to use as a currency in the game or app, or it's that special sword that you have made in an MMO game and you uh, send it to a different game to use it. We see that uh, slowly coming into place where different games can actually um, work together regardless of the platform or the console that they're played at. Therefore, we're going to see a change in the gaming industry towards that way that you could... Uh, have multiple games, but you don't have to start from fresh. That is one of the usages for Phonium, actually. There are a couple more that I would like to just quickly introduce you to, um, one of them being uh, mobile operators. Uh, this is a huge uh, market for both the mobile operators and the users that they have. For the reason that if mobile operators participate in a what's called a pre-installation of the app, having the app installed on mobile devices prior to the shipping of those devices. Therefore, when users get their phone in hand, they will be able to mine tokens and offset, if not pay their entire bill at the end of the month. That is really a huge potential for countries that are unbanked, that have no possible way of opening a bank account and paying, and paying through it. And best um, uh, with those is our third uh, and ultimate goal, which is mass adoption. Bringing Phonium to everyday use and everyday purchases with, with the help of um, a, um, a smart sensor that we have for quite a few years now called the NFC or the Near Field Communication. We can enable Phonium transactions to be paid um, without uh, having a card or without actually sending it with just touching the device to the payment terminal. So, uh, yeah, does that, does that uh, include phone to phone? 
Yes, absolutely. Phone to phone, it is available right now actually in our test network, which we have completed the alpha uh, with 26,000 capped miners. And currently we have over 40,000 combined with the Android and iOS that are mining with, with about 9,300 right now uh, currently mining that are not excluded from mining but are currently approving transactions. So you could uh, uh, download the app from uh, the uh, Google Play Store or sign up for the iOS pay, uh, beta which would require you to go to our website and um, fill in the form so you can receive an invitation from Apple with a specific code that we will redeem and download the app. But better, better than that you could actually get a feeling of what the app would look like, how it will operate, as well as to send and receive from uh, other users out there. And what's the most appealing part of the transactions is that we are uh, incorporating a new structure that allows users to send with an instant. If I send tokens to your account, you will receive them almost instantly for the reason that we have uh, encountered uh, the block built to be per transaction rather than per time uh, differences. So therefore, you would be able to, to, to send uh, to every transaction as a single block. <laughs> so uh, <clears throat> basically, we have the, the idea of uh, my favorite example of... Uh, I'm in Kenya, I sell my goat, I've got, I got to carry the cash with me because, you know, there's no security on my hut. And, uh, and, and they're actually uh, going to, to storefronts to have the cash converted into uh, something they can use on their phone. Uh, the future is they don't have to worry about that. They could actually transact from, from mobile to mobile, uh, less transaction costs, earning the, the fees needed to make this all work in their phone by what they're able to do, but uh, with no illusion that somebody's gonna open up, um, uh, open up mining and, and become a billionaire with phonium by mining. They're gonna, the, the, it's, the, it's, it's somewhat capped by the fact that it is a small device, but then perfect for those people who have, who have trouble uh, uh, participating in regular banking. That's uh, fantastic. That that alone is a reason to to love what you're doing. And then there's the gamification and the uh, uh, the promotion ability of being able to take phonium at my store or give a discount or do something like that because uh, in, because of the number of users. And uh, you've told us some numbers about users. Is there any cap to how big this can grow? How does it scale? Currently, with our uh, beta test, we actually cap it ourselves for the reason to see how the network uh, grows. And so far, we haven't experienced even one hiccup. Of course, knock on wood for it to grow with uh, thousands and millions. But we, ha we have uh, the network of transactions have been tested uh, with up to 200,000 call outs to the database at any given time and they get canceled out so they don't um, overwhelm the network. So far we have seen a steady growth uh, from January to June to those numbers, but with the ICO underway, with our crowd sale coming up next week, we'll probably see an increase based on the, the amount of users we have on our uh, platform. And then, and, okay, so, uh, ultimately, we see uh, transaction networks like this comparing to Bitcoin, which of course has got a lot of problems with how it can scale to be. I, I like to say you don't use Bitcoin at the 7-Eleven, just like you don't <laughs> use a gold bar. You know, it's a, walk in with a gold bar and say at the convenience store, I'd like to buy some, some soda. It's, it's not going to work. But um, And I see people comparing no. on the best is the biggest network of fast transactions is Visa. Um, and, uh, and, and you have in mind that you can scale to those kind of volumes? Absolutely. We have uh, encountered a good situation. Whereas, if you remember, I mentioned that if your phone gets to a danger zone or in the mid range, you would get excluded from mining. 
Well, this was a case where we thought, what happens if a lot of devices get excluded from mining at the same time? Well, we need more devices. The more devices there are in the network, the more stable it actually becomes. As devices would stop mining and would start mining, but we need to have as many as possible in order to keep the network um, fast. And it actually- so more rooms actually scales the network. It actually exactly scales the network naturally. The less users we have, the less transactions there are, the less miners we need. The more transactions there are, the more miners we need, the more miners will be on the network that will do so. Yeah, it sounds like uh, that we're, we're now, instead of like Visa has to have more and more processing power somewhere in whatever data center they do it, uh, other um, large mining gets, grows and grows and more people attack the few Bitcoins that are allocated. Uh, and, and now we're looking like the true Metcalf law effect of every device you add increases the power of the network. Absolutely. That is exactly correct. You've, you've, put, uh, you've put the internet network effect right into uh, transactions and whether or not it's playing a game or buying a goat. Exactly. It, it works regardless of the case and the reason. Great. Well, it's been a pleasure to talk to you about this. Um, I know some, some people are going to want to find out more. Um, and uh, is that Phonium.io? That is correct. Phonium.io is the website. It has all the information uh, needed from where to download the apps to how our roadmap is set and all the white paper, pitch deck, and one pager are available as well. Okay, great. And that's Phonium, uh, like, like, like a phone, and then UAM on the end? That is correct. Just like it sounds, phonium.io, uh, not .com, .io. Uh, so right. go find out more about that. And uh, thank you, Ivan, for your time. Uh, I think you're on to something wonderful. Thank you as well, uh, Warren.